What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. This episode is where we start writing down server code and we write a lot of server code for a very long time. I know that you see the length of the video, but I've put chapter down there so you can navigate through it, take breaks if you need to. I go on a couple of tangents that hopefully are helpful. Let me know in the comment section below if they are. I talk about how messages are being sent through the pipeline, um, how there are boxes that you write address on it and then you ship them over just like Amazon would do. I, I go on a couple of tangents, let me know if they're helpful and do note that the code, we write a lot of code today, but the code that we write is pretty much the only code we're going to be writing for the whole thing. Um, the next episode in this very few episodes left, I don't know how many episodes left there is, but they're all going to be rehearsal of, of things we've already done. So we're going to be creating a new class through um, inheritance and it's going to be stuff that we know and we just re we reiterate on what we've done. So if this is very complex to you, what we do today, if it's something that you really have a hard time grasping, I do suggest you stick along as we do more um, in the next couple of episodes and you're going to get the gist of it as we do it. You're going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, we create a new message. I know what to do. We have to create a new operation code for that message. Oh, we have to create a new event for that, blah, 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 things like that, right? So I do suggest that you stick along and um, comment out everything that you think is very difficult for you and I'll try to make well first I'll reply to your comment and then I'll try to make a, a resume video resume in French is overview I'll make an overview video of, of things like that just to help you out um, yeah the the preview because this is a preview what we actually get by the end of the episode is just a debug.log I know it's a little bit underwhelming but it's a debug.log that tells us hey we're connected on the right hand side over here is my host on the left hand side is the game running we're connected to local hosts, as you can see, um, and we don't go inside of the game just yet, but that's just part of what we do next. So very disappointing result, but so much code in the back end, and it's going to just make things so much faster later on. Okay, hopefully I didn't rant for too long, and um, have fun. Hey, you welcome back, everybody. Welcome to what is going to be the first time we we'll actually do multiplayer on this project. We are going to be using, as I've mentioned, the transport layer, and for that to happen, we'll need to first install the Git package. Um, today, basically, we're doing the server, we're doing the client, we're making those two scripts, and we're also making sure to boot them and shut them down if we need to. For example, if we try to host a game, nobody's joining, we can then hit the back button, and that's going to shut down our server, and then we'll have the chance to connect or go for a local game. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And um, we are going to get started by installing the Git package. Now to make sure everybody is on the same page, we are not using ML API. We're using uh, something beneath ML API. So the relay, the relay uh, system that ML API uses, we're going to be using that. So leverage transport feature, community transport, that's what we're using. Uh, not the actual higher level API for, for the sole purpose that we want to do something that is very, very... Um, close to the relay system i don't want to like i don't want to import the whole ml api if you're into ml api um we by now should have a ludo tutorial out there or a live stream that i've done using ml api but now we're doing something that is even a lower level which is good in programming the lower you go the closest you are to uh, to native you could say so to install this i'm gonna go under the install transport uh, basically, all you have to do is open up the package manager on Unity and import this thing here. Um, to do so, let me do it directly in your face. Package manager. We're going to be adding, we're going to be waiting a little bit. We're going to be adding a package from git URL and then just pasting what we've got here. So I've got the preview for 060. Click add and then it should be downloading this package. You could, I believe you can also just write down the name of the package. So com.transport.unity or com.unity.transport and you'll get the latest version, which is something that you might want to do here because uh, who knows, there might be some improvement. However, as I'm recording this, if you want to have the exact same syntax, if you want to see the same syntax, I suggest you use the same version as I do. But if you don't, um, then do note that there might be slight changes from here, from here to there. But uh, this package has been pretty stable and hasn't been really deprecating any of its code thus far, so I don't expect that to happen. Good. That being said, we now have this package and we are going to start coding right away. 
And to do so, I'll be creating a new folder inside of the script folder that I'll call net. Uh, anything related to net code is going to be in there. In here, I'll create another folder called net messages, and I'll explain what those are in a second, because there's a certain concept that, um, that I go for, and I want to, exp I want to explain how this system is actually. Um, another script we'll be going to be creating is the client. I'll right click creating another script again. This one's going to be the server. And I'll create one more script inside of the net message folder. And that's one is going to be the net message. We're going to be creating one more script later on um, in this episode. But thus far, I think we have a lot of work to do already. So I want to explain the system real quick of net messages. When we send data from um, this, the server to the client or the client to the server, we are basically sending sockets with information through a certain pipe. The com.unt.transport provides us that pipe and it provides us a way to write those messages through stream arrays, actually, to stream buffer and also stream writer. So you can read and write that socket that you create and they give you a pipeline that you can send it through. Um, those socket in our implementation is what we're going to be calling net messages. And to make sure that we know what type of message is being sent, for example, is this a message about uh, making a move or is this a message about resigning or is it a message about uh, making sure that there's somebody else joining us? Um, to, to define what those messages are, I'm going to be using a, um, a byte, a, a simple byte like that, and it's going to be what I call a operation code. Um, and every single message is going to have an operation code. Now, what is inside of one message is going to change whether it's a keep alive message, whether it's a move message, the data inside of it will change and we will be creating new class every time that there is a new message, basically. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to start laying down some code for the server and also for the client. Both the server and the client will share similar code. However, there's going to be slight difference. So we're going to be recreating it on both sides. First off, I'm going to start by just deleting everything, um, but not model behavior. Model behavior will run in, in uh, the engine, in the inspector, in the scene, right? And what I'll do right here is I want to have a static instance, just like we've done it on the game UI here. I can do it this way, or I could also include something like the mono singleton, um, which is actually what I have in my other piece of code. So for example, here, that's the code I'm referring myself to. That's the code I made earlier. I'm using model singleton instead. It does the exact same thing, just a little bit more, um, a little bit safer. And just to show you what it does, actually, since we're right here, model singleton is this piece of code that I grabbed on the wiki, and it allows you to have a public static instance. It's exactly the same as um, what we saw earlier with the game UI, which unfortunately I closed. But uh, what it does is before it actually creates it, it looks if there's another instance in there, and then it assigns it. But if there is no other instance, it then creates a new one. So if you do a, for example, a game UI dot instance, and it can't find anything, then it's going to create a new one and return this new option. It also makes sure to um, remove the reference here when you do an application quit, but the garbage collector should be able to do that on its own. Since I don't want to have to take you through the process of actually fetching that online, we're going to go with something that is a little bit less safe. But since we're making the code, we can control it. So back on our code, that's the current code we have right here. I'm going to be going under my server script and do a public static server instance. And that will do. Though when we do that, we also have to make sure we have an awake statement somewhere. Why an awake? Well, because we have to assign this instance. OK, so this is our singleton singleton implementation, though you could argue that it's not really a singleton because it's just a static instance and it doesn't provide you protection against new singleton. You know what I mean. I'm just going to leave this section here at the top and we're going to forget about it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, now let's talk about our server. We're going to need a couple of things. First is something called a network, network driver, like so. At the moment, it is not being found, and that's because it is not. We don't have the uh, the proper include at the top. So by hitting Control dot, I can do using network transport using network transport. Here it is. And I'll call this one driver. We're also going to need a list. Here I was gonna do protected, but since we're not inheriting from anything, we'll do private. 
uh, a native list. Again, this one doesn't exist, so let's make sure we use unity.collection. And that list is going to be a list of network connection. We'll call it connection with an S. Uh, one small parallel, again, is that it's exactly the same code I use on my multiplayer survival game here. So this list of connection is going to be everybody who's connected to this very specific server. Uh, in this case, a maximum of two persons since we're doing a chess game. Now I have another, I have a, a couple more private field out here. One is a boolean to know if the server is active or not. That's going to be good for a logic. I also have something called a keep alive tick rate. So how long should I wait before I send a message? Just to make sure we are alive, basically. And with that comes in the last keep alive timestamp. So these two here are just to make sure I keep sending a message every 20 seconds. Um, this is so the connection doesn't drop, basically. If we drop for a longer amount, like for example for 30 seconds, I believe, by default, then uh, we might hit a timeout and that's going to disconnect the server. Or sorry, disconnect the client. One last thing I'm going to do here in the field is I'm going to create a new action and that action is going to be connection drop. Uh, really quick, I've included action with using system and what's going to happen here if if one player drops, um, I'm going to be calling this event and this event will be fired and I can do something according to whatever happens. All right, so those are all the fields I'm going to be needing in the, the near future. And here are the methods. I'm going to start with the initialize. The initialize will take a single parameter and that one is going to be the port. I'm not doing the IP right here because this is a server and it's going to be ran on local host or it's going to be run on the public IPv6 IP or IPv4 IP. So uh, here I don't get to choose the IP address. However, I am going to choose which port it runs on. I'm also going to make sure I do a small section here with methods. There we go. Inside of this, I first have to initialize the driver and say network driver dot dot create actually. Again, this code is being provided by the transport layer. Okay, we then create an endpoint. So network endpoint, that I'll just call endpoint. This is gonna be a local field. And I'm gonna allow anybody to connect. So here, this, uh, this endpoint over here is for the people to connect to us. When we are on the server, uh, sorry, when we're on the client a little bit later on, this is where we want to connect. So this would be a specific IP on the client. But since we're on the server, this is all the connection we are going to accept. In this case, any IPv4 address will be accepted. I wonder if there's just a any, any, and that's all, right? Oh, and also, if you want to do a local host here, you could do a loop back IPv4. So only yourself could connect to this. But here, let's allow anybody. All right. And finally, the port, of course, because you have the option to create a port. That's going to be one we receive in parameter. All right, so right here we have our driver, we have our endpoint. Now it's time to actually start listening, because as a server, we need to listen for things that happens on the port. And to do so, um, we do it through driver.bind, and we bind the endpoint. So a common practice that we like to do is to wrap this up in between an if statement and then if it's not equal to zero so if it's not equal to i believe they use zero for success then um we're unable to bind to the port so here i'm just going to input some of the code unable to bind to the port and we have an error else well we are listening so driver dot listen okay we could also put a small statement here such as currently listening on port, then add the port. Okay, so if we end up over here, the server isn't started. Uh, one of the reasons that could be true is if the port is already occupied. So for example, here, if we send in the port 80, 80 is actually the port to listen to the HTML protocol, um, that wouldn't work. We have to use a port that is not used by any other application on the host machine. So, all right. This would be the initialize. So when we create a server, this is what happens, but we're not done just yet. We also have to start creating our list of connections. So connection is going to be equal to a new native array. 
native list, sorry. And then we send in something here. We send in the amount of people we want to have in our game, the max amount of connection that we could have. So initial capacity, but since it's, um, it's something that is going to be allocated persistently, like this, this is your max player, you could say. So in a chess game, that would be two. If we go above that, uh, it's not going to be allowed. We're going to have an issue. And finally, is active is going to be equal to true. That's a Boolean that I'm going to be using for the logic of this game. Now bear with me, we've done the initialize. We're going to go do the shutdown. Shutdown is much easier. Let's do it quite fast, actually. So public void shutdown. This happens when um, you close off the server. We start by looking if it's active. If it's active, we dispose of the driver. We dispose of the native list. Oh, sorry, dot dispose. And we put is active to false. So that is all that happens when we shut down the server. Now to make sure everything is actually working quite good on Unity, um, and, and we actually dispose of these when Unity shuts down, I'm going to be adding the on destroy callback. This one is called automatically by Unity. And in here, I'll call the shutdown. You could also do on application quit, I believe. That's something we saw earlier in the model singleton. Now this is where it gets a little bit complicated. And the place where it gets complicated is of course the update function. So inside of the update function, I'm going to lay down the whole the whole code right here actually. So let me just copy that over and we'll just go over explaining things. First off, we check if it is active. If it's not active, we just go, we return, right? We don't need anything uh, if it's not active. The second function is going to be a function we'll create called keep alive. It's going to make sure that we send a message every 20 seconds in this case, just to make sure that there is communication back and forth in between the server and the client. Okay, so this one, we'll mark it down. We'll do it a little bit later on. Here, the driver schedule update complete is um, because the driver is part of the job system, we have to make sure we call this. So it kind of empties up its queue of messages coming in. So this is done. This is actually something that we don't have to create. And then here comes three functions we have to create. First up, clean up connection. Is there anybody that is not connected to us right now, but we still have its reference? This is what it's going to be used for. Accept new connection is, um, is there somebody knocking on the door to enter our server, basically? And finally, the update message bump is, are they sending us a message? And if so, do we have to reply? Okay, so we will start off with the cleanup connection. And um, just like I've done with this function here, I'll copy and I'll paste the code so you have a quick look at it. And we'll just go through it. Cleanup connection, we look for every single connection in our list, in our array. If this connection is not created, so this boolean will swap off it's the per if the person has dropped, then we remove that connection at swap back and we uh, we do minus minus i here to make sure we don't break that loop basically. Next up we have the accept new connection. Accept new connection will be looking at the driver to accept. That's where uh, is there anybody knocking at the door? This is returned through the accept. And if not, if it's not a default connection, so if it's actually somebody who's there, then we're going to be adding that connection to the list. So those two are done. Those two were quite simple. And then finally is the update message bump. And I'll give you a moment to actually write that down um, because it's quite a lot of stuff. You could also, I believe at this point in the tutorial, there's going to be source file release. So if you want to see them, they're most likely in the description by now or on GitLab. Um, okay, so update message bump. We start by declaring a stream reader which will be used for those messages in case there's one. Now for every single connection there is, because there are gonna be like two person connected in this game, for example, there's gonna be um, the host, which will also be a client because the host is playing, and then the client that will just run the client. If the network message that they send is either data or disconnect. Now do note that there is, um, I wanna show you here because it's quite important, every single frame, you could say, they send one of these four messages. Empty means there is no message in the queue, which means, okay, let's move on to the next person. Connect is when they knock at the door. That's um, the, you don't have to do anything with this because we, we actually take care of it when um, we call the driver.accept. 
data is when they send a message. That's the most important one. That's when they send a net message. Um, whatever we defined earlier, it means that there's a packet that the server is receiving from a certain, a certain connection. So it's a player, a specific player sending us over a message containing information in it. And that information is not a connect message because we don't take care of that. It's not an empty message because we just don't do anything with that. And it's not a disconnect message either because that's being taken care of right here. Plus, um, for example, if we have a client that just alt F4, he's technically not sending a message. However, the network type message we receive is a disconnect message in this case. And therefore we can, we can at that point take care of it through here. So if the message we receive is data, we will do something here quite soon. And if it's not data, but it's a disconnect message being sent automatically, then we're going to be calling um, connection drop. And we're also going to be resetting that connection. That being said, connection drop is not, oh, I didn't error here. That's why. All right. One more thing that is not part of the code usually is the following right here. Here, if the um, if somebody disconnects, so if the other player disconnects, I call shutdown. But this is not something that I do in my multiplayer game because my my um, survival game. Because if somebody disconnect, if a client disconnect, I don't want to be shutting down the whole server because one person left. But in this case, since it's a two player game, I do it here. So it's very important. This does not happen usually. It's just because we're in a two person game. Okay. Just, I want to make sure that this is understood quite well. Okay. And that would be pretty much it, I believe, for the server, though we could go ahead and create the two other methods we need. There's two other methods in the whole server and then I promise I'm done. Uh, I know it's quite a lot, but we're going to be copying most of this code over to the client. So. We're going to go quite fast for the client. Those two other methods are a uh, client, actually server specific. So server specific, and it is a broadcast method, which will take care of sending a message to everybody and a send to client uh, method. So this one would technically come in first. And this is going to be used when you want to send a specific message to a specific person. So you are targeting one person that you want to send your message to, and you're sending that message only to this person. Broadcast would mean that you're taking one message and you're sending it to every single client there is. So the two players in this case. Now let's have a look at what is in here. When we send a message to a specific client, we have a data stream writer first. And then we start a driver without begin send. So basically this start a connection with a very specific person. So here that would be me, for example, player one or player two. And outside of that, we get the writer back. So we kind of just take this writer, we put it in some sort of pipeline. That pipeline writes out to a writer and it writes out information to basically who it is going to send it to. So when we do a begin send, it basically start grabbing your packet. It writes down the name of the destination and then it put it, it, it actually spews it back out. So then after that, we can put it through our own message writer, you could say. And that's what this serialize is. So that's like, that's the message writer. So this is where we fill in the package of that box. Yeah. You know what? That's a good analogy. So this is Amazon. Amazon gives you a box. That's the box. When we do driver that begins send, we first write down the address on top of the box. And then we, we go inside of our manufacturer. We put stuff inside of it and then we give it back to the postman. And when we do end send, the postman just carries your box out and send it to a very specific address. So this is exactly what happens. Uh, mind you, our manufacturer is not open right now. So we're going to just shut this down for the moment. You know, the quarantine and all, we're just going to make sure we shut that down. So broadcast is basically the exact same process. However, you have a list of client initially. So a list of everybody who wants to have your package, they all bought off your, your offer in Amazon, and then you create a box for every single one of them. And I should stop the analogy. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. It's a list that goes through all the client and then it sends the message to them. So this goes here. 
Now, I put in commentary two things uh, here. Th those two things are basically because our manufacturer isn't open and we're about to go do just that after writing down the client. Okay, let's make sure everything works, everything compiles. It seemed like it does. Couple of warning here, that's totally normal. That's because we're not using all the fields and whatnot. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna be opening up both the client and then the server, and we will do pretty much the same process, but we'll do it fairly, fairly fast this time. So please stick along with me. You can actually keep up with me, I'm sure of it. We're gonna start with the client. We are gonna be swapping the uh, model singleton instance over here. So the singleton implementation now becomes a static instance of client. Good, so we're done with that part. Now for the field that we are going to be declaring, um, it's gonna change a little bit. So let me just copy all of that over and we're gonna modify it here. We, yes, we still need a network driver. Yes, we still need to include network transport. Here, we don't need to have a list of connection. We, we just need to have a single connection. So I'm gonna be removing the S and just turning that into a single field. Why? Because we just have a single connection to the server and not multiple connection coming in inside of, um, well, the client doesn't have it, doesn't accept any other connection but the server. We are still gonna need a Boolean for is active and we're still gonna need an action if something drops. So if if we drop from the server, basically. So those fields, they remain here. Um, and then we can start writing down the following, the methods. And I'll copy over these three. So all of them, initialize, shut down, and on destroy. Paste them here, and we're gonna have to change a couple of things. So uh, first, the initialize takes in more than just a port now. It also takes in an IP, so string IP. The driver is still created. We still create a endpoint, but instead of actually uh, trying to connect anywhere, which is not going to work, we're gonna be doing network endpoint dot parse, and we're gonna be parsing the IP and the port. So whatever we input inside of um, the, the box at the beginning, right? So the, the input field. The port is gonna be something we define uh, behind the scene, no need to go further than that. Since we actually do a parse here, we're not gonna need that statement for the port. And then what we're gonna do once we have all of that is we're just going to try to connect. So let's remove the driver.bind, we're not binding to anything, we're actually gonna try to connect. So we're gonna say connection is equal to driver.connect and we send in the endpoint we just created. All right, next up we can remove this. We don't need it anymore. Is active is going to be true in case it needs to be true. We could also have a debug.log in between those two right here. So attempting to connect to the endpoint dot address. Um, and then after that, there's gonna be one more thing that we haven't done earlier, but we'll do here. It's a function that is part of the flow I like to create. Register to events. So register to events is um, it's always a function that I put in the initialize. It has to do with registering to other script that will tell us if something happens. So in this case, register to event is going to keep track of the keep alive messages. I will skip that for the moment, and but I'll come back to it once we create it by the end of this episode, of course. So that initialize is right here. Collapse it down. Inside of the shutdown, I believe everything pretty much remains the same, so is active, if, if that is true, we we'll dispose of the driver. We unregister from event, so, okay, that's gonna be a little bit complex here. Um, we have the register to event here. Down there is gonna be the unregister to event, which of course doesn't work just, just yet, but we'll come back to that in a second. We're gonna dispose of the driver, yep, and we're gonna put is active to false. I believe we could also do connection is equal to default network connection just to reset it just in case I don't think it's gonna be useful because we would reset it but but hey it's there in case we decide to and finally the on destroy remains the same so we can collapse this down and go to the second section which has to do with the updates update I'm going to be grabbing um let's grab all of it so let's grab all of it including the update message pump 
paste it here and we're going to remove things as as we go through because of course we're not going to need all of that we don't need to take care of as many things as the server does so here um if is alive is false we just do a return that's fine we don't have a keep alive to keep track of actually because what's going to happen is the server is going to send us a message we're going to be listening for that message on the client and if we receive it we're, we're just going to ping back the client um the server so we will be waiting for the server to send us a keep alive message before we just send it back to him. So we don't technically have to take care of certain floats uh, and a timer. We'll just just sit there and if the server asks us if we're here, we're just going to say, yep, we are. All right. um, okay, so we don't have a keep alive, but we're going to have a check alive instead which is a tad bit different. Check Alive is just going to be looking if we're still connected to the server. So for example, if Keep Alive is, is there and it works, the server sends us ping, that's fine. But if the server is down, we don't get to know that. So we have to check if our connection is alive or not. And that's where we will do it, just beneath that. So private void check alive. And I'll paste in that code right here. If my connection is not created and I am supposed to be active, then something went wrong. We lost connection to the server and we're going to call connection drop and also shut down the client. So we have another chance to connect later on to somebody else. Okay. Now, the next thing we have in the update, because we're going to go back here, is a cleanup connection. Here, we don't need that. We are not a server, therefore we don't need to clean up connections that are dead to us. We only have one connection and it's being taken care of in the check alive. Accept new connection is also something we don't need to do because we're not accepting anybody else that connects to us. So let's take this and kill it. And then finally, we have the update message pump. The update message pump is going to be quite important as you probably guessed it, but it's going to change a lot since we don't need to do we don't need to do the exact same thing as a, as the server. We don't have to go through a loop. We just have to go through a single connection. And to do so, we're going to be removing this loop. So this for loop over here, well, let's remove it. Let's also make sure we remove this, this uh, set of brackets as well. I'll bump that one space, but the rest actually stays here. So we're, gonna, we're still gonna be um, looking for messages being sent by that specific connection. And to do so, I'll do a while loop just like that, but I'll remove the content of that to change. Um, instead of doing pop event for connection, we're going to be doing just pop event, but through the connection. So here, let me show you what it does. Connection dot pop event driver out stream. And if that is not equal to network connection, actually no network event dot empty oh sorry dot type dot empty then we can go ahead and enter this loop so it looks like the exact same line as we did earlier but instead of being um instead of pulling the driver for all the connection we just pull a single connection which make things a little bit more efficient now inside of here we have to parse three different messages and i'll just remove all of these for the moment the three messages we need to parse are the following, the connect message, the data message, and a disconnect message. Here, I'll be commenting out these, and I'll leave the disconnect. When we disconnect also, we have to make sure we call the on connection drop, something that I haven't done in my code earlier, but now I will do. So connection drop, um, by the way, every time I call an event, I always put a, um, a question mark at the end because we have to make sure it's not empty if we call an event that is empty it's gonna crash so we don't want to we don't want to be calling an empty event basically so somebody needs to be listening to it is what I'm trying to say and by adding the question mark we can make sure that um, somebody uh, somebody is there because this check if it's null if it's null it's not gonna do anything if it's not null then we can call the invoke and then of course we'll do a shutdown as well if we end up disconnecting. All right, so the update message bump is kind of similar. However, here we take care of the connect event, which is something we didn't do earlier. 
when we connect, we're going to be telling the server, hey, we're here. Basically, we're going to be sending a message a little bit later on that says, hey, server, we're here. Um, add us to your game or add us to your lobby or whatever. Um, we're also going to be uh, parsing messages in case somebody sends us a message. If the server sends us a message, we have to make sure we receive it. In this case, that would be, um, hey, player black has moved his pawn from X to Y. So those would be the message we receive or message such as, such as uh, the keep alive message. And then finally, disconnect just takes care if we're dropping the connection. Okay. So we've done the update section. I believe that was the worst. Now let's go down to the final section, which would be sending in messages. So the only person we have to send message to right here would be the server. And here is what it looks like. So send to server, we create a, we create the box. We write the address on the box. We package whatever needs to be packaged inside of that box. And then we send it to UPS. And that's what happens. We just don't have the manufacturer yet, so we're going to comment out the message that's serialized right here. I lied. There is one more section, and I'm sorry about that. Um, that section is what I've mentioned earlier. It's the register to events, and it's also one last function. We'll call this one uh, event parsing. Three functions in here. One for registering to event, one for unregistering to event, and the on keep live and I'll explain the system right now. So first off, I'll go inside of the initialize, I'll on comment this inside of the shutdown, on comment that. So what will happen at this point when we initialize, we register to certain event and if we shut down, we unregister from them. Those events will be events that are bound to every single different message. Here, a little bit later on, we're going to have our keep alive message. And whenever we receive a keep alive message, we're going to be calling this very specific function, the one that is now listening to, right? And we're going to be calling it with the message received. So in this case, that would be the keep alive message. Now, what is cool about this is whenever we call, whenever we receive a keep alive message, we're going to be calling a very specific uh, event. So this one, and then the message is actually being sent right here. I do know that this is a net message, normal one but I'll give you a preview of what happens uh, a little bit later on during the tutorial. So here we are parsing a, don't copy that by the way, but here we are parsing a welcome message. So when we connect, we send in a welcome message. It's still the same thing, um, but then we receive it as a net welcome message because we parse it as that. And then inside of that net welcome, there is specific things such as the assign team. So this will happen shortly in, I believe, the next episode or the one after that. But uh, just keep your head up for that. Here, we don't actually parse this into a keep alive message because the keep alive message is actually empty. We don't send anything but, but the message itself So and the type of that message. So that's why we don't do anything fancy here. We just take that message and then send it back. So as I mentioned earlier, that keep alive message is something that the um, the server will be generating every 20 second and then when he sends it over to the client this is going to be called this is going to be called and then we go down here and we just ping it back so we send the message back to the server to say the server asks us are you alive we just say yes right but he needs to ask us first okay so we're pretty much done with the client and the server for the moment we're gonna have to come back and, and on comment a couple of things later on uh keep up guys just keep up we're almost done we have to do the net message right now. So as we, oh, sorry, as we've mentioned earlier, the net message would be your box, um, would be the box traveling in between the server and the client. Inside of it, you put whatever you feel like. However, um, here, the base message, so this is gonna be a base class and every other messages will inherit from that class. The base message needs to have a couple of virtual things so all the box are the same and we can handle them as as one so when we send a message we don't need to create uh something like send net welcome we could just do send message and the net welcome will be uh, parsed as a net message so here are fields that are going to be everywhere first up we have the operation code which is going to be a set and get that operation code will be a enum that enum will then be created somewhere else not in this script but I'll give you an example of what it is right now. So public enum operation code. 
We'll start with the keep alive. Keep alive is going to be, for example, byte one. It could be byte zero, but let's do byte one. There's going to be a welcome message later on. There's going to be a start game message later on. There's going to be all of that. I'll leave them here for the moment, but I'll move them over to another script quite soon. Um, and actually, you know what? Let's let's write them all down so it's not too confusing. For the whole tutorial, um, from start to finish, we're going to have a total of five messages, and here they are: keep alive welcome start game make move and then rematch so only five message now to be frank we could actually shrink this down and actually use i believe three message tops for the whole game or actually maybe even two well we could do one even so we could shrink this down to only using a single message a single operation code but i would rather not for clarity purpose now do note that the smallest um that the smallest piece of information you can write inside of a net message or you could say a box would be a byte and you know we have 0 to 255 slots to use um, if we were for example if we were about to write our our 257th message for example if we reach a point where we have 257 of those then maybe we would try and shrink it down like and merge some messages together why because every single message will have an operation code to it and if we reach to a point that for example we're now at 257 it would mean that we need two bytes to write this number and all the new messages being sent and all the old messages being sent would have to have two bytes and you know that's like that's adding a byte to every single message which might get expensive in the long run so I'm not scared of adding message right here for clarity purpose, as long as we don't go beyond 255, which will never go. Like, I mean, um, I have roughly 20 for my survival game right now, and it's too much. But um, yeah, no, <laughs> we don't need to go that far. So those are the operation code, and every single message is going to have an operation code. Now, this class right here is um is not quite done. We still have to create a couple of things, and those things are going to be the serialized deserialize receive on client and receive on server function which I know we're getting quite ahead in the tutorial I'm going to write down right here and just explain now here we're using um, networking transport so I'm gonna make sure to include that at the top also remove unity engine I don't need that uh, this is a whole class right here and what happened is serialize is when you put stuff inside of the box right so that's where the box is being sent to manufacturer it has an address on it at this point and we're just putting whatever the person ordered inside of it deserialize is the other way around is we are the client we received the box it just arrived at the, our doorstop and we're unpacking it and putting it, putting whatever was inside of it we're putting it at the right places we're making sure that it fits within a certain object receive on client is a function that i'll be calling um, when i receive that box on the client side and receive on the server side is the same thing but um, there's a small difference here when we are the server and we receive a message we are also going to attach whomever is sent it to us so for example if we are um, a manufacturer and we receive an item from a client we need to know who that client is we need to know because for example if that client sends us a specific request that only us can answer we need to reply back to only him so it's like a back and forth connection however if we receive it on the client we know that there's only one manufacturer here we know that there's only one uh, server so when we receive on client we know who sent it it's only Amazon and nobody else right we only deal with Amazon <laughs> um, okay buy locally guys all right so that would be our net message class one more class again <laughs> sorry guys this is not done yet but one more class that we're going to be writing is something that i like to call the net utility and the net utility will take care of doing stuff uh it's just going to be a helper class that contains this enum class this enum uh sorry this just basically this enum and also all the events that we're going to be firing the net utility will contain all of that and i'll put it down inside of the net folder as well so i'll create a new script call it net utility and this one's gonna be fun it's gonna be a static class so public static class 
And as I've mentioned earlier, since we're not running out of time, but we're going quite ahead, I'm going to be copying most of the code over, starting with the enum that I had earlier. So over here, I have the enum in the messages, net message. I'll put that at the top here. So I have a single spot where I can edit most of what I need inside of net messages. Here I'll be using system, networking, transport, and unity engine. And as I go down inside of the static class, I'm going to be creating all the different net messages here. And I do recommend that you copy that over from whatever source. I believe it's going to be on GitLab at that point. I like GitLab quite a lot. Um, here are all the messages and here are all the events that are going to be associated with them. They're all static. Very important that they are static in this case. Those messages are basically, we have five messages, right? Those are all events that are being fired depending on which side the message has arrived. For example, the C keep alive is when we receive the keep alive message on the client. The S keep alive is when we receive it on the server side. And you're going to see here a difference is between the signature of the action. So when we receive it on the client side, then uh, it's just the message itself. But when we receive it on the server side, it's the message itself plus whomever sent it. And those are all the action. Now there is a function that is going to be shared in between. Um, it's a function that's going to be shared in between both the server and the client. And we saw it a little bit earlier. It's the on data function. And I'll just copy that over. So it's quite a big function. And let me actually explain what this is quite, quite fast. So earlier in our server, we have this over here. Whenever we receive a message that has type of data, we need to parse that data somehow. And this is what the utility on data is for. I'll remove out the comments since we now have it. Same thing in the client side. I want to remove out the client. No, sorry, not the client, but the, the comments. And since we're here, let's also remove all of these. So messages serialized exists. The net utility C keep alive exists. So everything that was commented earlier, I'd like to just put it back since now we have all the piece of code that we need, except this one. <laughs> um, and just have a look at this function. So I'll go over it quickly. Here is a function that is actually shared in between both the server and the client. And that function happens when you receive a message containing data inside of it. So you can recite, if you, if you guys remember, you can receive four different type of message. One of them would be empty. One of them would be connection. The other one would be disconnection. And then the fourth one would be data. When we receive data, we are going to create a message and that message is going to be, um, depending on what the operation code is, it's going to be created inside of its own class. Another good way to visualize this is You've just received a box at your door. Note that this process right here only happens when you receive a message. So, you know, the box has already been made. The client or the server, they already put your, they put down an address on the box. They put some content inside of a box and they sent it to you. This happens when you receive it. On data is when you open up that box. We know that there is going to be content inside of that box. So we create a field right here that is going to say, Hey, this is the content in that box. We still don't know what it is, right? We don't know what is inside of that box at the moment, but we're going to just take a peek. And this is what the read byte is for. So every time that we are to create a message, right? Every time that we are to create a box, we're going to put on top of the box, as we wrap it, we're going to put just a small int on top of the box that says, Hey, this is, this is a message for keep alive or hey this is a welcome message that's going to be on the top layer of our box and when we unpack it when we unpack that box we open it up the first thing we see is that small that small byte and that byte says hey this is a keep alive so what happened is that first we start by saying hey this is a message we know that there is content inside of that box i still don't know what type of content wait let me have a peek i open up the box i read the first byte and then i say Okay, well, I just see the top of the box, but by looking at the top, I can tell that this is a keep live message. And then from that point on, since I know the type, 
I can recreate that object with the data stream. So then at that point, I read the box as, as it is a keep alive message. Okay. Not implemented yet. So you still don't know how we go about reading this, but we'll see it in just a mess, in just a moment. For this time, we're going to be commenting out everything but the keep alive. Why? Because we're not doing them in this episode. We'll get to that just after explaining the rest of this function. Um, do note that we also have a default case in case we receive a message and we still don't know what the type is because we haven't made a case for it. So here we do a log error because we never want to have a message that we don't know what is inside of it. That's usually a runaway from that is going to explode. Okay. So this explodes our code because the box is, is full of, we don't know what. Perfect. Now, um, the next part here, uh, is in regard to the receive on server and receive on client. If the, the data we receive here, if server is equal to null, which is null by default, by the way, so this is null by default, um, as you can see here, when we do send, actually, when we do on data stream and the default connection, we call the on data just the stream. So just the content of the message, uh, not the content, sorry, but the whole, the whole box. And then we default the connection that is on the client side, but on the server side, we send in the stream, whomever sent it. And then this as a server, why do I do that? I do that. So when I enter the on data, I know that this is a server, um, but I need to know whether or not I'm calling this on data from the server or the client, because it's important for me to call receive on client and receive on server after that. Um, but you're missing a crucial piece of information right now. And it's how do we package and unpackage this information? When we create our box, how do we put the operation code on top? on top. So when we open it up, we can see, Hey, this is it. And how do we unpackage it? So we can peek at the operation code and also peek at the content inside of it. I'll show that to you right now as we create our keep alive message. So when I create a new message, I create a new behavior class. So this one's going to be called net keep alive. Um, in some of the iteration that I do, I like to just put an underscore after a net, but I decided not to do that for this game. Um, don't know why, but it just hands up like that. And here is my keep alive message. When you are to create a new message, I usually just wipe everything because I don't want to have any overhead overhead for your messages are going to be carried on throughout your whole pipeline messages. So we're going to be really careful here. And I make sure to inherit from that message because I want to have the followings. I want to have all of them. They're all going to be useful. So back on my keep alive. The first thing I want to do is create a constructor to constructor, actually a keep alive constructor with nothing in it. And then a keep alive constructor with a parameter type of reader here, what they do first, when I create a new keep alive message, because I just want to send it over, um, I want to make sure I assign my code and my operation code is the keep alive operation code, also known as one at the moment. But do note, you could change it at any time, not a problem. You could reorder this as long as you keep the same name um, in the operation code. Now, I also have a second, a second one, a second constructor. And to make it simple, this is when you're making the box. So here, this is making the box. And the other one is just when you're receiving it. So. It's a two difference in between them. This is when you want to package something for someone. So here the server is going to package up a new keep alive message. And this is when you receive it. How is it different? Well, when you receive it, it's already full of information. You just haven't unpacked it yet. So you know that the box contains information about the keep alive message or the make a move message. It contains that information, but it's all wrapped up inside of this data stream reader. And we haven't really unpacked it yet. The unpack comes from the deserialize right here. And guys, this is where it gets fun, right? Packing up and unpacking the box. There is a slight difference in between the two. And there is a small caveat as well that I have to explain. First up, when we create a new box containing that message, this is what we do. We first have, uh, we have the box, right? So this is being provided to us by, by Amazon, for example, they provide this to us. 
at that point, if you guys remember, at that point, we already have the address where it's going. So we already have all of that. To make sure we understand, let's go back to the flow. Send to client. We create a new box. That box has your address on it. And then message.serialize, which we will uncomment because we're right here. Um, this is where we package it up. And that message.serialize is actually this function, right? That's our serialize function, overridden from the net message. Here, we write the top of the box. So we write the operation code. That's where we're going to be peeking at. And that is a single byte, so we make sure to call the write byte. Totally fine. Now, here is where you would think that we have to do <laughs> reader.read byte. But truth is, we don't do that here. And the reason we don't do it is because when we get to that point where we deserialize an object, we already had to read the first byte. So this is where it gets weird because we already open up the box during the flow of deserialize. We already open up the box and I'll prove it to you over here. We already read the first byte. So here we have a box. We don't know what the content of it is, but we peek and we remove the first part. And that first part is the operation code. After that, after we remove the first part, we then create our Cape Live message with a string, which would mean we enter this we deserialize and then we enter this part here. And at that point, the, the top part is already gone. So we don't have that anymore. And technically, since this is a keep alive message and it doesn't contain any information, this is where I would put my information. Um, it doesn't contain anything. We don't have to deserialize anything. And we're quite, we're quite good here. To give you a quick example at a message that is a bit different, for example, the make a move message. Here we have a bunch of information inside of the box. And as we unpack it, so we write the code, right? We we'll, we'll write the, the top part. Then we write information such as uh, where the, the piece was, where it's going, and also which team it was. When we read it, we read the exact same way around. So original, original, destination, destination, and theme. We don't read the code, but this is how we would go about unpacking the box. Enough off a peek to the future. Uh, we're going to finish up this by doing the two functions that we talked about, receive on client and receive on server, both overridden for the sole purpose that um, the first one, they had nothing in it, right? So this, this net message over here, receive on client, receive on server, nothing happens. But inside of the keep alive, we can call the keep alive on both side with a dot invoke. And this is going to wrap up I believe all the code that we needed to do today, it was a really big episode, guys. I'm actually quite sorry about that. I wasn't expecting it to be that big, but we went through a lot of different parallels. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's quite big. To make sure everything works, let's actually plug this in through our, I believe this was on our UI pieces. So we're going to make sure to put that on the UI piece. And let's open up the engine as well, see if everything compiles. That would be quite important and everything does. Now we can go inside of the game UI and under the game UI, we're going to be uh, booting the server and also the client from different places. But of course, we'll need a reference to that before we go ahead and do anything. So at the very top of our game UI, I keep baiting you into more code. I'm very sorry for that. We're about to wrap up the episode, I'm, I promise. Um, server and client, both of them. So we'll need a reference to that. Let's make sure we assign it right now so we don't forget. We don't have them uh, running the scene right now, but I'll just add them on top of my canvas. That's going to be some, my, my sort of game manager is going to be the canvas in this case. Uh, server client, which doesn't requ require any field, which is quite cool because you could port that over to somebody else if you, um, not somebody else, but you could port that over to a console if you wish. Let's drag and drop our server in here, drag and drop our client in here, go back to our coding board. And um, just to test this out today, I believe we're going to be filling in the online host button. So when we start hosting, we're going to do the following server initialize on port. Uh, let's do this one is probably not used. So 8007 change that <laughs> you don't need to keep it this way. Um, yeah. 
And when we host, we're also going to connect to ourselves. So here is the loop back address. It's the same for everybody. So make sure you input that. And we connect to the same port. On my previous version, I just connect to 8005. You can connect to anything that it that basically isn't used. Okay. So that would be when we host. I would also like to have something when we connect. So on online connect, let's do client.initialize and then we send in the address input.txt and also the, the port, which would be 8007 in this case. What is the address input? You might say it's something we don't have. So we have to go at the very top once more and create a new serialized field for that text mesh pro input field. So TMP pro address input. And with that, we can, uh, we, we're going to go ahead and plug that in a little bit later on. We already have the, the field. Let's see. Do we need anything else? Um, yes, we do actually. Let's make sure we, we do it properly for the whole thing. So when I start a local game, I'm going to initialize a server and I'm going to connect to myself. Okay. So initialize server on port 8007, connect to myself through the loop back address. That's going to be on local game. We're going to come back and make sure we, uh, we set some field here that says, Hey, we're both player at the same time. But at the moment we don't have that. On online game button just sends us to the menu. We don't do anything here. That's totally fine. On online host button. Yes, we start a server. We connect to ourselves, and we're put inside of a waiting state that is inside of the host menu. When we click, um, connect, then we of course try to connect to somebody else. At this point, we don't have a server running. So we're just trying to connect to an external source, which is good on online back button. Uh, we just go back to the menu. So that's totally fine. And finally on host back button, here is where we would need to shut down the server. So server shut down. But since, uh, when we host, we're also a player, we're also going to be calling the client dot shutdown. And I think we've got everything that we need. Yeah. Okay. Let's give this a try. So to give this a proper try, see if thing works fine. We're going to go ahead, go under our build settings. I'm going to be adding this scene to the build. Make sure that I also don't have a full screen window. I'm going to be just trying this out in a windowed mode. Uh, this resolution, sure, it's going to work well. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to actually assign my IP address input. So when I was trying to connect, um, I did not have that. So make sure you go ahead and you go under your canvas and drag and drop your IP address input. So this thing here. Um, so when we try to connect, something happens. Also, something else that I realized is that we don't have any input, uh, not input, but we don't have any, any way to know that somebody has connected just for all the sole purpose that we didn't really do anything here. Um, this is what should happen when we connect. It should send a message, a welcome message. For testing purpose, I'm going to input a debug.log at the moment that just says we're connected. Yay. I and this is only going to be called on the um, client side. And as I was testing this out, as I was wrapping up the episode, finally, I realized we forgot to do one last thing, and that's to send the keep live message. Because I, as I was testing it out, everything worked fine until we got disconnected through a timeout. And that's because we didn't send a keep alive message. So going back inside of our server.cs, we have the keep alive inside of the update function, and it's right here. The keep alive message is uh, something quite, quite simple. I'll go ahead and I'll copy it right now, but it's something we could definitely write by hand. Um, what we do is we create, we package a new box and inside of that box, we input the keep alive message. Here it is in my copy paste. I'm going to input it down here. So every 20 second, this is what it means. Every 20 second, we first reset the 20 second timer. And we broadcast a new message. So we send a new message to every client and that new message is a new keep alive message. Don't need to fill in information in that because we don't have any information to put inside of a keep alive. It's just a empty object with the type of keep alive. Very important. That we have that with that being said, we are wrapping up this episode with a nice build. So control B to build all of that. And we're going to do our final test. Do note that the only way to know if it worked or not at the moment is to um, run the host on a build 
and also wait until the client side tells us in the debug.log that we're connected. Um, have a look. When we are connected successfully with the client, we're going to receive the we're connected um, message from the update message bump. That's the only way we can tell if we succeed at the moment. And the second success criteria would be to wait for 30 seconds for the timeout to happen. And if we don't receive any error after 30 seconds, it would mean that, hey, at least we received a keep alive message. So <clears throat> let's give this a try. I'm starting to run out of voice, so it's about time we run out. Uh, about time we're done with the episode. Right here on the right hand side is going to be my host. Left hand side, connection to myself. So 127.001, connect. We are connected, finally. And I'm going to wrap up this episode right now. I'm very sorry for the time it took, um, but this is very crucial stuff. I do know that I went on tangent. Let me know if it actually helped you out or not. Um, and yeah, appreciate all the support you give me through likes, through sharing, through all of that. And of course, I will be seeing you in the next episode in which we're going to do things that is much simpler. Now we've done the base and we're going to be rehearsing that base continuously as we go. Um, one last thing. We're not receiving any problem, so we're not timing out. Very good. That's it. Okay, before I run out of voice, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Cheers.